Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another tutorial. This time I wanted to show you how you can use GitLab CI in order to run Postman tests. The reason why I'm creating this tutorial is to show you how you can use GitLab to run Postman tests using Newman. And I've created this because I've seen some tutorials out there that I think are a bit outdated and possibly wrong or maybe it's not the right or the best solution to this problem. So this is why in this tutorial I will quickly show you how you can set up your pipeline in order to run the Postman tests. And I'm at gitlab.com. I already created a repository. And the first step in order to create a pipeline would be to create here a new file. So the GitLab CI file. So this is how the file should be named. And maybe you have an existing pipeline. It doesn't matter. I will simply create a test stage. And let me then create the job. So the name of the job will be test, or we can call them postman. Tests doesn't really matter. It's gonna be part of the stage test. And for that, we are gonna use an image. And the postman team already has Docker images for Newman. And they are quite up to date and contain a uh, up to date version of Newman. And this is why I prefer to use official images and not like other tutorials suggest to use sort of a self built images. While self built images are totally fine, uh, I think in this case they are not really necessary and I will explain why. So, this is why we're gonna use here this Alpine 3.3 Docker image. It's quite easy to load is very fast and let's see how we can use it. So the path to this image is postman. And this is actually the name of the image human alpine 33. Okay. And the first thing we want to check is that Newman is properly installed and then you can call it. So for that we are going to use script. And the first command that we are run is simply Newman dash dash version. And that should be actually enough for what we initially need. So let's commit the changes and see how the pipeline runs. Now the initial job finished, but as you can see, there's something wrong here. So you'll get this error invalid command sh. And I think this is probably the reason other tutorials suggest not to use the official Docker images for Newman. And the reason why this error appears is um, the Docker image that Newman published, that the Postman team published actually, contains an entry point, which is directly to Newman as a um, CLI command. And for that reason, we cannot really use it directly in GitLab the way it is. So we need to configure something, but I'll show you in a bit how you can do that. So what you want to actually specify for this image is another property. In order to specify in another property, we have to first say that this is the name of the image as we had it. And then we're going to define an entry point. And we are going to define an empty entry point for this case. And now you will see after this change has happened that now when I call Newman dash dash version, I actually get the current version of Newman. And this is exactly what we wanted. And as you can see, we didn't need a custom image in order to achieve this point. So the next step would be to simply run a collection. I already prepared a collection locally, which I will add to my repository. But of course you can call any collection that you have remote or anything like that. That would, would work as well. So let me upload another collection to my repository and then change the GitLab CI configuration in order to execute this collection. So I'm going to simply use the upload file functionality here. And the name of the collection that I added is collection.json. Make sure you check the description because I will posting a link to this collection so that you can use it in your own project as well. So now the collection has been added. And what we need to do is to change the GitLab CI configuration. 
So we leave the part with Newman-version because it's generally good to know which version of Newman has been used and if everything is working up to that stage. And next we're gonna simply say Newman run collection.json. And that should be actually enough in order to execute this command. And as you can see, the first command is still executed. We have the Newman version and then we are executing the collection itself. And this is the collection, this is the result. All, everything inside the collection was actually fine and it looks quite good. What you could additionally do is to create an HTML report and I will show you next how you can generate that as well. And we're gonna change a bit the script that we are running here. And we are gonna add an additional reporter and a CLI, we still want to have that for debugging and I'm gonna add HTML as a reporter as well. Now the thing with the HTML reporter is that starting with version four in Newman, this is no longer automatically included in Newman. So this is an external dependency that we need to manually install. So for that reason, I will add a new line which says npm install dash g. That's important because we are gonna install this dependency as a global dependency so that when Newman starts, we can actually find it. And the name of this dependency will be newman dash reporter dash html. Now, additionally, what we want to do is to specify where this report should be saved. And we're gonna say something like dash dash reporter dash html dash export. And the name of the report will be, let's call it report dot html what will this do it will run the collection again it will use the cli reported which we have previously seen and it will add an html reporter as well which we previously installed here and then it will save it as a file as report that dot html now the thing with GitLab is that every time you create files, they will not be automatically saved somewhere where you can later view it. So for that reason, we need to define an artifact for this job. And uh, this can be done by using artifacts. And we are gonna define a path where this artifact is located. This can be a folder, but in this case, I'm just simply gonna use a file. So this will be report.html as we previously seen. Okay, now let's see what happened now. So what we have done is to install the HTML reporter, which you can see here has been successfully installed. And then we started running the collection and we will still get the CLI report that everything worked out fine. But this command actually generated a new file, the report.html. And then in this later part, we are starting to save these artifacts where it says here, uploading artifacts, they are being saved. And we can see them if we go here under job artifacts, we can click on browse and we'll be able to see an, any artifact that this job generated. So in this case, we'll be able to download here the HTML report and have a look at it. In later tutorials, I will show you how you can use this functionality of publishing HTML reports right inside GitLab. But for the moment, it's more than enough in order to get you started with Newman and uh, GitLab CI in order to run this thing. Now, what I always like about when you have tests to make them fail, to make sure that everything is still working if the tests fail. So in this case, we are gonna go inside the collection and make a small change in order to make the tests fail because if the tests don't fail, we don't have any value from using continuous integration and having all this automation in place. So for that, I'm gonna go inside collection.json and I'm gonna hit here the edit button. And even this is JSON, it's a bit harder to read. You will be able to see here that I have an expectation. So I'm expecting that something is called, uh, that a property is called, has a value of bar. And of course, I'm gonna change it to something else. Let's say foo. Okay, so what has happened now? The run that you see here that we have a job failed and that there's an error and 
this is how the collection, how does the report looks like, and you will see that one expectation has failed. But if you look on the right side, where we previously had our artifacts, you will see that the HTML report is actually missing. And this is really maybe not something that you expect, but this is how GitLab by default works. So usually artifacts are something that resulted from the build. There's something good. So if the build itself failed, uh, GitLab says something like, well, doesn't make any sense to have any, any artifacts for this job. So it's a, it's a failed job. But in our case, we actually want to have these reports to save them in order to have a look at them to see what actually happened in case what we are getting in the CLI is not good enough or we like to have a more visual representation of that. So we need to go back to the GitLab CI configuration and make a small change to this artifact so that they get saved even if the job fails. So what we are going to tweak is the following. Here on artifacts, we are going to add a new configuration and going to say when. And when do we want to have this artifact artifact generated? Always. So this is why I'm going to type here in when always. So this will be always generated. And if I save, if I commit this and the test run again, we'll get this failed report as well. So that's about it in order to get started with GitLab CI and running Newman Postman tests inside GitLab CI. This is a very, very simple example. Once again, as a recap, I have simply created a new stage, call it a test stage. And we are gonna use, in this case, an official image from, from the Postman team using Alpine uh, 3.3 as a version for the operating system. And the trick here in order to get this image to work is to define this entry point. So basically to override the entry point so that it doesn't have an entry point. So this is what this thing is doing. And after we've done that, we can use Newman just as we use it locally. So in this case, I'm calling the version and seeing if everything is working properly. And because later I want to use an HTML reporter, I'm installing this dependency as a global NPM dependency here as well, right before I'm starting the collection. This is the generally, this is a very simple collection run. Uh, you will find links in the description, so make, you sh so make sure you check that as well. I will post there all the files and all the information that you've seen in this tutorial. Guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you think you learned something new, give this a video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Check the video description because you will find some cool stuff there. I even created an online course just dealing with Postman and explaining you the ins and outs on writing API tests using Postman. So maybe you want to check that out as well. You will find a link in the description. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.